The second design step is to estimate the dimensions of the different treatment steps. For the aeration step, we choose the cascades, since they are robust and easy to operate. To design the aeration step, we need to know the length of the cascades, the number of steps, and the width of the troughs. The number of steps are determined by the desired total efficiency and the efficiency of an individual step. When we assume a step height of 0.4 meter, uh, the efficiency of the oxygen addition is about 25%. Um, you can find these values in the table, uh, table 6. No, table 3 on page 6 of the handout of aeration. Okay, based on the required effluent concentration of, uh, let's say in our case, 8 milligram oxygen per liter, and the saturation concentration that depends on temperature and partial pressure, we can calculate the total efficiency. Uh, for saturation concentration, we take 11.3 milligram per liter for a water temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. Um, now we can calculate the efficiency, and this is the uh, desired effluent concentration minus the influent concentration, which was very low, so let's say 0.5 milligram oxygen per liter, divided by the saturation concentration minus the influent concentration. And this gives an efficiency of 0.69. 69, yes. Um, and with this, we can calculate the amount of steps, the number of steps. That's one minus one. This, this is the efficiency, and the n is the number of steps. And then we can calculate that the number of steps is four. So um, we calculated now four steps, and each step has a height of 0.4 meters, so the total height of the cascade is 1.6 meter. Now we are going to calculate the length uh, of the cascades by dividing the design flow, and the design flow the is, is um, Q is thousand cubic meter an hour and we are going to design the width and the width is called B here because in Dutch the width is breite and we still use the B. Um, the design overflow rate is being between the 15 and 100 square meter an hour. And these values can be found also on page six of the handout. Uh, this gives a total length of 10 to 20 meter. So let's take the 20 meter. So we have uh, a length, I will um, take another color for that. is the length is 20 meter. Now then uh, the width of an individual step can be calculated. First we have to know the, um, the width of the flow of the stream, which is the D. And this is calculated by this formula. which is a thousand meter an hour squared divided 
by 9.81. Twenty meter, and this is eleven point nine seven. This is one point nine seven. Then total minus fifth cubic meter which makes D is 0 0.027 meter. So we can fill that in here. D is 927 meter. Then we can calculate the velocity. which is 1852 meters an hour. Then we can calculate the time, the falling time. And this is two times H divided by G. Point twenty nine seconds. Uh, then we can go on with the, uh, the x, and this is the velocity times the time. which is 0 0.15 meters. So the x is 0 0.15 meter. And the height we already know, this was 0 0.4 meter. And now we can calculate the width and the width is two times x, which is two times point fifteen meter, which is point thirty meter. So B is point thirty meter. We also have to decide how many parallel units we need. For cascades the minimum is two because then we can maintain one and send the rest of the water over the other. Of course we have to check then if the water does not jump over the cascade steps. The flow is relatively small. So let's take this minimum amount. The softening design will be explained in the next movie.